It's a non-conference battle in West Lafayette as Zach Fasha and the Purdue Boilermakers get set to take on the Big East leaders and Connor Grammis trying to lead Xavier into the postseason. BTN is on hand tonight at Alexander Field as the Xavier Musketeers are in town to take on the Purdue Boilermakers. We mentioned right at the top of the order, Connor Grammis is really the straw that stirs the Xavier drink. Well, he's hit the ball all over the ballpark for Xavier, and he is going to be a key part of their offense tonight, but he's definitely a force to be reckoned with and a guy that the pitchers are going to have to pitch around. And it'll be an interesting night on the mound, too, Scott Pose. We'll see a lot of pitchers out there. The first, though, is James Kulak making his sixth start of the year, a 2-1 and record with a robust 6.65 earned run average. What you like, though, is the strikeout-to-walk ratio for James Kulak. Ooh, he's got an excellent strikeout-to-walk ratio. He's got kind of a quirky wind-up and a slurvy curveball to go with it, but it'll work about 85 to 87. He's got to get those off-speed pitches over, but he will pitch to contact, and what Mark Wazikowski's hoping is that he can give him three strong innings, and then they'll go to the pen as they're trying to line up their, their staff for the weekend. Yeah, the weekend is what matters for this Purdue team. They've got Ohio State coming up this weekend. They need wins. They need some help. There's a slim chance to get into the Big Ten tournament after their sweep last week at the hands of Illinois. But to get into that Big Ten tournament, first things first, they've got to win games this weekend. So they'll approach tonight with this weekend in mind. First pitch to Connor Grammis, and it's fouled away, and we're underway in West Lafayette. And a beautiful night for baseball. It's really one of the best nights we've had in the course of this Big Ten season, you see the shift on already for Purdue on this 70-degree night with a light breeze at Alexander Field. The 0-1, that fastball misses in to the right-handed hitting Grammas, who leads the team in batting average, runs, stolen bases, hits, and hit by pitch. He is their best hitter, hitting 327 on the year. Two balls and a strike. On Connor Grammis, Jake Shepsky, and Aubrey Major to follow here in the Xavier First. Analytics have come, become such a big part of the college game. That is not the shortstop that you see in the center field camera. That's actually the second baseman, Howe, who has shifted over. But Connor Grammis is a dead pull hitter, and he can hit the gaps. 2-1 is a high strike over the outside corner. 2-2 two and two now to Connor Grammis. The 2-2 pitch. And Grammas in on the hands. Muscles this one to Howe. Has to range back over to his original position to make the catch in short right field. And there's one away here in the first inning. And a big one to get out for this Boilermaker defense. They're very good at turning the double play. They're very good at keeping the run game in check. They do keep the run game in check. And they can play some solid defense. Nissels in left. Hunter is in center field and McKenzie is in right. They've got a good outfield that can cover the big gaps here at Alexander Field. Here's Jake Shepsky out of Homer Glen, Illinois. First pitch swing, a little twister out to Howe at second base. Flips to first, two up, two down. It's Ryan Howe has been busy out at second base for Purdue. Well, if early contact is in any indication, Kulak is doing a good job of being very deceptive because he's gotten in on both Grammis and now Shepsky. That fastball is showing some life. In on each of their hands, he induces soft contact to the right side. You've got two good defensive teams on the field tonight. Not a bad idea to pitch to contact and let your defense do some work. Here's Aubrey Major, 277 hitter, six homers, 28 runs driven in. First pitch swinging, and Major chops it to third. Powers with it, throws across, and an eight pitch inning. And the side is retired. We head to the bottom of the first, scoreless in West Lafayette. Back at West Lafayette, bottom of the first in a scoreless game. And this Purdue offense trying to get it going before the weekend. Cole McKenzie, the table setter at the top of the order. Well, he sets the table. He needs to get on base, and they can string some hits together. But that's been the difference for this Purdue offense this year is that they've got to string a few together to score some runs. They're looking to do that tonight so they can do that this weekend. And the man who was charged with slowing this offense down, at least originally, Nick Zwack, in his 10th start of the year, his 18th appearance, a 3-2 and two record with a 5.98 ERA. And like his counterpart on the mound for Purdue, 
we don't expect to see Zwack out there too long tonight. Well, he's going to try to eat up three innings as Billy O'Connor is trying to set up that staff. But Nick Zwack has been working primarily out of the pen. He'll throw 85 to 87. He's got a change and a curve. But much like his counterpart for Purdue, he'll utilize the defense. He'll pitch to contact. And why wouldn't he utilize the defense? It's the best defense fielding percentage-wise in college baseball. 984 fielding percentage. Only 30 errors this year for this team. On the course of the season, excellent number. Here's Cole McKenzie, who has really been a tale of two seasons wrapped up in one season. March 29 to April 7. McKenzie was just one for 23, just an ugly two-week slump. But over the last 20 games, he's batting almost 420. 312 on the year for McKenzie, and the first pitch is ball one. Bryce Bonner, Skyler Hunter to follow here in the Purdue first. A batting average 11th in the conference entering play tonight as the 1-0 catches the corner for a strike. Good look at Nick Zwack. Weekend starter to open the year for Xavier, and he made some big starts. Started at North Carolina, started at Arizona State, started at Grand Canyon. 1-1's fouled away 1-2. and two. We were talking with Billy O'Connor beforehand, and he said... His stuff kind of dipped, and they moved into the pen. That revitalized him a little bit. Well, when you're facing teams like that, your stuff's going to dip because those teams can play, and it's kind of worked out for Xavier very well because they had an incredible non-conference schedule, but Billy O'Connor feels it really paid dividends for their Big East season as they're sitting and waiting and potentially the Big East champs. Two balls, two strikes, and the Big East champs occur if Creighton loses one time this weekend to Villanova. So... Talking to Billy O'Connor, said, I know you're a big Xavier fan. He said, yeah, absolutely. He said, are you a bigger Villanova fan? He said, we're huge Villanova fans this weekend. Absolutely huge. Three and two the count on Cole McKenzie. It's an interesting scheduling quirk where your bye week is the last week of the season. They are not in the Big East schedule. They're going to go out non-conference and be cheering from afar. Playing Cincinnati this weekend is Xavier. Three balls, two strikes to McKenzie. And McKenzie lines it to center. Waiting for it is Luke Franzoni. Makes the catch for the first out. That's a great at bat against a non-conference foe. And let me tell you why. Cole McKenzie saw a lot of pitches. And what he did was give his teammates a look at what Zwack's going to be featuring tonight. Because he got behind in the count, was able to fight back. So he saw some breaking stuff. So did his teammates. And it's nothing but information for the Boilermakers. Played the role of leadoff man to perfection other than getting on base. Here's Bryce Bonner, designated hitter, junior out of Allen, Texas. He flares it foul and out of play. But a frustrating year for Purdue, and this offense has just never really been able to get on track this year. They've shown some good arms, in fact, broke the school strikeout record this year, but offense has just not been able to get it going. 240 average. And it really comes down to, as Mark Wasikowski told us, just the inability to gap those balls. You have to string together three hits to scratch across a run. That puts a lot of pressure on the lineup. The 1 1. Bonner lifts it in the air to right. Playable for Shevsky. A couple of steps in front of the track. He'll make the catch, and there's two gone in the first. Well, there is nothing about Mark Wasikowski that he's not honest and can't and he will tell it exactly like it is with us and with everybody else and he told us the other day he's look, just not getting the job done I mean it's it was a it's a frustrating year for him it's a frustrating year for this Boilermaker program especially after where they were last year in the postseason well he really rode a wave where they had some they even got an NCAA win in the regional as they went on and did very well and the program was on the right track but they took a step back this year and I've I don't think I've ever heard a coach be more hard on himself. Picked up by Given at short. Spins and throws to first in time. Chris Given, a nice play at shortstop. And a 1-2-3 inning in the bottom of the first. They're the number one defensive team in college baseball. And a first chance to see a good pick by Given. The throw to first to end the first. Scoreless top of the second in West Lafayette with Scott Pose. I'm Kevin Kugler. Our BTN crew 
excited to be on hand because it's a nice night. So much of our baseball season, the BTN crew has been wrapped up in ponchos or I know Ike on camera too. I think he was in a full parka earlier this year. Of course, Ike is normally cold-blooded as it is. Matt Warkenton takes the first pitch for a strike at the knees, nothing and one. Warkenton given an Altenberger here in this Xavier second inning. Warkenton hitting 279 on the year, the senior out of Ontario, Canada. Seven home runs, 33 runs driven in. The 0-1 chopped foul, and quickly nothing in two. Kulak's done an effective job of pitching in to these powerful right-handed hitters for Xavier. He's continuing to do that to Workington. Doing a good job of working to his glove side and commanding the inner part of the plate. Workington's reached in eight straight, but he's only hitting 258 in that span. The 0-2 wants to go upstairs and does, but... Couldn't get War Kenton to bite on that one, so now one and two. Changing the eye level. Look for the breaking ball next. I will. One ball, two strikes. There it is. On the ground to the right side. Second baseman Howell up with it. An easy play to first. Four up, four down, and nothing's left the infield yet. Good start for James Kulak. That's because he's been pitching in. He's been doing a good job of commanding that inside part of the plate. It's kept the Xavier hitters off balance, but they can't get extended. And when you hit it off or below the barrel, that's what's going to happen. Chris Gibbon, the batter, out of Castle Rock, Colorado, the senior shortstop. First pitch swinging, and he chops it foul. Six for ten last week against Villanova for Chris Gibbon. And the terrific defensive shortstop now has the average above 300 on the year. Four homers and 25 runs driven in. He hit 342 a year ago. This will be the third straight year batting 300 or better if he can keep it above 300 by the end of the year as the pitch stays up one and one. That's pretty consistent hitting at a high level for Chris Gibbon. And not only that, but anchoring the middle of this defense for Xavier that's leading the country. That's getting it done. Shift on again for Purdue defensively. You see the second baseman, Howe, atop the second base bag. That's him in your picture right there. As the count goes to 2-1 and one on Chris Given. Yeah, the scouting reports is so advanced. I mean, you'd think they were conference opponents the way you're shifting around each hitter individually, but that's what analytics does now for the college game. It's only going to get better and better as more data becomes available. The 2-1 swing and a miss, and it's 2-2. Two and two. Now, the difference, Scott, we were having a conversation last weekend with Darren Erstad before a game, and he said the difference is a major league pitcher throws to a spot. That doesn't always happen in a college game. You can set up your analytics, and you can set up your defense based on that, but sometimes that pitcher doesn't throw to the spot that you expect him to. Well, he has an excellent point, but there is a general premise that swinger uh, hitters have their swings, and no matter where you throw it, if they're a dead pull guy, they're going to pull it as it is. But it is to a point. If a pitcher misses his, spot, misses his spot, and then you pitch in, you're playing him away, and a guy turns on it and beats your defense, then you got problems. Three balls, two strikes, one down in the second. Given weights and the pitch hit on the ground foul. Up that third baseline past Tyler Powers. Everybody's got a plan until they're punched in the mouth or until your pitcher doesn't throw it to the right spot. Well, you used to try to do that, and I can remember being at the higher levels of the minors and major leagues, is that, yeah, they can set up their shift, but you can move around in the box to create problems for them because if they're trying to get to the outside part of the plate, you climb on top of the plate and you start pulling it into the shift. Just missed low on the 3-2 pitch, and Gibbon draws a one-out walk. Didn't miss by much for Kulak, but just down. Take another look at the 3-2 pitch. Well, Kulak goes with a fastball. It is down, and that's the toughest pitch for a catcher to frame. You saw Fascia catch the ball, then try to bring it up, but when an umpire sees a lot of movement in the glove from the catch to the frame, you're not going to get the call. That ball was down as it was. There's Ryan Altenberger. 269 average, five homers, 20 runs driven in. And a throw over to first to keep an eye on Given, who has five stolen bases in six tries this year. But we told you this earlier, Purdue 
one of the best in the country, best in the conference as far as gunning down guys on the base pad. Zach Fascia has caught 18 trying to steal. Lifted foul and out of play off the bat of Altenberger. Well, there's another pitch in. This time, Kulak is doing a good job of getting to the inside part of the plate on a left-handed hitter. Really trying to tie up this Xavier team. Xavier's won three straight, hitting 267 as a team. A team that Billy O'Connor says is one of the most talented to ever come through Xavier on the baseball diamond. No balls and a strike on Ryan Altenberger. And time is called. You may look at their 23 and 27 record and say, how can Billy O'Connor say that? Well, there's a very talented team that spent the first 20 games of the season on the road. By the end of this season, they'll have played 39 road games. That's low for ball one. They played at North Carolina. They played at Louisville, at Lipscomb, at Arizona State, at Grand Canyon, at Kentucky, at Texas. Talk about a traveling road show. Xavier went anywhere and played everybody. One ball, one strike to Altenberger and throw over to first and not much of a lead over there for Chris Gibbon. Your record's going to suffer, Scott, when you play a non-conference schedule like that. It certainly will, but again, you're paying it forward because you get that experience in the year that's going to help you, and look what it's done for Xavier in their conference here, or their schedule. I mean, they're on top of the conference right now. Two balls and a strike. And Billy O'Connor was telling us before the game, he said, look, that's, that's why we did it, is so that when we got into conference play, we know that's our path to the NCAA tournament, but we got into conference play, there wasn't anything that was going to surprise us. We'll have seen everything and there will be no more tense spot than a one-run game in the ninth against texas that one skied on the infield drifting out is how coming in is mckenzie and the right fielder will make the catch out number two recorded off the bat of altenberger and billy o'connor really has that luxury of this weekend with it being a non-conference series yeah you want to try to win but they got a conference tournament, and they can set up their staff exactly the way they want it going into it because, as you mentioned, Kevin, that's their way to get in the NCAA tournament. They've got to win that tournament. Yeah, the focus is on that. They're co-hosting the tournament. It's near Xavier's campus. Big East Baseball Tournament not only has free admission, but anybody who goes gets free concessions. I kid you not. Concessions are free. Tickets are free. If we weren't going to be in Omaha, sign me up. I mean, if it's free, it's me. That's why we got into broadcasting, Scott, because occasionally they bring us free food. Free ballpark food? Are yeah. you kidding me? 250 the average for Luke Franzoni as he takes a strike, nothing at one. Hot dogs always taste better at the ballpark. Oh, and nothing looks better at the ballpark when you're eating a free ballpark hot dog than wearing a free BTN polo like we will next week okay. when we're at Omaha at the Big Ten Baseball Tournament. Couldn't agree more. No balls on a strike. Runner at first is given and a painted pitch over the outside corner with a fastball from Kulak. He has spotted well early on here, Scott. Well, he commands the outside part of the plate here. You see that pitch just perfectly framed by Fascia. Doesn't have to move his glove. Kulak hits the spot. And pitchers love to pitch ahead. The ball's two strikes way outside for ball one. You saw in that overhead shot that the pitchers have an advantage right now. Look at the plate area, all cloaked in shadow. And meanwhile, for at least the next hour or so, it looks like the mound will get the benefit of sunlight. So the ball coming from bright to dark around home plate. It's getting close to that time right now when you need to make your decision as a hitter, the ball's entirely in the sun. Not so bad, but in an inning, it's going to be the worst because... When you have the ball and you have to make the decision when it's partly sun and partly shadow. But honestly, by the time your mind's made up is that early before it's even there to that point. The optimist says partly sunny. The pessimist says partly shadowy. The ball two strikes and a toss over to first.
We talk about that all the time on these broadcasts. You're a hitter. You've made it all the way up to the major leagues as a hitter. When you are at the plate, is it a real noticeable difference? Anything that distracts you from seeing the ball is a noticeable difference. So, yeah, it is. One ball, two strikes. Swing and a miss. Franzoni out on strikes. And Kulak able to get through the first two with nothing across. Everybody enjoying just a perfect night for baseball in West Lafayette. First pitch is low and away. It's Zach Fascia, Ben Nissel, and Nick Everts for Purdue in this second inning. Fascia, the leadoff man, riding a 14-game hitting streak into tonight. Hitting 352 in the streak. Good job, guys. Turned on that one and fouled it off one and one. <laughs> 17 runs driven in during that 14 game hitting streak. He's got one home run as well. You know, it's kind of rare, Scott, to see a catcher at the end of the season get hot at the plate. Especially a guy like Fascia, who has been behind the plate so much this year, as he puts this one into the gap, it'll split the gap and roll all the way to the wall. And Zach Fascia has now got a 15-game hitting streak. Lead-off double here in the second inning. Fascia continuing to see the ball well. He sees this pitch on the inside part of the plate, gets the barrel right to it, but swings through it, gets that extension, and creates that gapper that Mark Wazikowski is going to love to see this lead-off double. That's been missing from the Purdue offense. But a nice job by Fashion to get that extension and jump on the fastball to get into scoring position right away in this second inning. And now with the eighth double of the year by Fashion to start the second, the challenge for Purdue becomes getting that runner home. Ben Nissel hoping to do that. Hitting 286, but in very limited time this year. The sophomore has struggled with a back injury. In fact, was out from March 13th, didn't come back until May 7th. And this is a talented hitter. We saw last year, freshman All-American. Got better as the year went along, hit 304 overall. The 1-0 swung on and missed one and one. And as he got through the postseason, he was even better in the regional in Chapel Hill. He went seven for 11, was named to the Chapel Hill All-Regional team. I was there to see it. He had a lot of hits in that regional and was really one of the better players and produced a lot for this Boilermaker team. And you saw in that first swing, he was trying to drive that ball to the right side, get his teammate over. Just one of those little things in the game. And that's what Mark Wasikowski preaches. As you get him on with less than two outs, you find a way to get a ball to that right side. Two ones normally a go to swing and fastball count, grip and rip. But Nissel's going to be focused on that right side. Two balls, one strike. Fascia at second, trying to go to right again, and the count even two and two. It's a good team baseball. He doesn't get the job done, but the approach is right. You can see that. Now all bets are off. Just make contact with two strikes. Now you can see the lunge towards the right, trying to send it to the right side. Purdue trying to scratch out the early lead after the leadoff double by Fascia. And that is a called strike three. Excellent pitch from Nick Zwack. Froze Ben Nissel first strikeout for Zwack, and there's one away. Zwack comes in and gets that inside corner. He just rears back and throws one perfectly spotted. It freezes Ben Nissel. Good pitch by the Xavier left-hander. Here's Nick Everts now. He's driven in nine this year, hitting 272 on the season. Again, Mark Wasikowski rarely will even address injuries because he doesn't like to use anything that could be construed as an excuse. As this one's bounced through the left side for a base hit, stopping at third is Fascia, a single for Everts. But Everts is another one of those guys, Scott, that missed a good chunk of time this season with a pulled hamstring. 
suffered on April 7th at Nebraska didn't start again until May 7th so it's not an excuse but it is a fact a lot of guys have missed time with injury in this Purdue squad this year but it makes this game all the more important for specifically those two guys they haven't a lot of time to get things right but this gives them another opportunity to get reps to get right before a very important weekend for Purdue baseball there's Ryan Howe runners at the corners with one out 231 the average for Howe. Throw over to first, keeping an eye on Nick Everts over there. Everts has not stolen a base this season. 0 for 4. And remember, he's about a week back after being out for a month with a pulled hamstring. Not sure we'll see much movement from Everts over there. But keeping an eye on him anyway is Nick Zwack. First and third, one out. Big opportunity for Purdue in the bottom of the second to grab the early lead. Pitch out. Throw down to third and no advance from Fascio. Scampers back to the bag. Tali Manastra, the catcher for Xavier, trying to see if he could catch his fellow catcher napping a little bit down there. The 1-0. Mighty cut and a miss, and it's 1-1. One one. It's that fastball up, very tantalizing for a right-handed hitter against a lefty, but it looks so big coming in there. Your eyes light up. You think you're going to get a hold of it, and it's just tough to catch up to. One ball, one strike on Ryan Howes. Time is called. Well, you know what Zwack is thinking. He'd like a ground ball at somebody in the infield, preferably second or short. House hit into three double plays this year. That would get him out of the inning. Pitch out again. Throw down to third again. And a good play by Jack Housinger down there at third base. That throw sailed a little bit on Manastra and almost went into left field. What's the pitch out? Xavier looking for some hijinks from the Boilermakers. None come. So the throw goes down to third. And going to keep Fasha close. Two balls, one strike. And upstairs, makes it three and one. Boilermakers one pitch out of the zone away from starting to think about a big inning here in the second. The three one pitch. And he popped him up. Foul territory. Warkenton over there in foul ground makes the catch, and that's a big second out here in the second inning. Ryan Howe works the count back to where he wants it. 3 1, looking fastball, got it, and just gets underneath it. Enough life on that fastball from Zwag to get in on Howe. He pops out harmlessly in foul territory. So now two down, and Tyler Powers trying to provide a big two out hit. Hitting just 136 on the year with two outs. Trying to turn that around here and get a little momentum going into a big weekend against Ohio State here in West Lafayette. Outside for ball one to Powers. Pick up a teammate. Come on, Tyler. Fasha at third, Everts at first. And a snap throw over, Everts back in easily. Zwack set the 1 0. In on the hands, and he floats it into right field for a base hit. Scoring is Fascia, stopping at second is Everts, and a huge two-out RBI single for Tyler Powers. one nothing Purdue. Tyler Powers got a pitch that he can handle. It was a fastball in, but yet he was able to pull his hands inside and shoot this to right. It's out over the middle of the plate, but he's thinking the other way in the entire swing. Look where that pitch is. It's on the inner half. 
but he's still able to pull his hands in, shoot it over to right field. It's going to reward him with an RBI in the first run of the game for the Boilermakers. Just a nice job of using the barrel and hitting a line drive. Boy, what a lift for a young man who'd not had great success in situations like that this year to come up with a big two-out hit as Evan Albrecht fouls the first pitch back, nothing and one. So Tyler Powers delivers. And it's a one nothing lead for Purdue. The 0-1 pitch to Albrecht. Low. Efforts dancing around out at second base. Has to scamper back to the bag. <laughs> one ball, one strike. Two and one now on Evan Albrecht. It's another fastball count. Albrecht looking fastball, usually middle in. You see it there, put a good swing on it. Albrecht out of Wisconsin, West Bend High School product. His uncle Bill Albrecht is coach in high school. Two balls and a strike as Albrecht waits and drives this one to right field. Shevsky battling the sun. He'll make the catch and the side is retired. But the Boilermakers get it going with a little double from Zach Fascia planting his stake in second base, finishing it off Tyler Powers with the RBI single. We'll have that whole series for you on BTN as the Wolverines try to grab their first regular season crown since 2008. Aubrey Major leading things off now for the Musketeers in the fourth. At War Kenton, Chris Given to follow against Connor Tomasic in his second inning of work. And it's fouled away by Major, who's quickly down nothing and two. Major grounded out to end the first inning. Connor Tomasic, second Purdue pitcher tonight. Kulak went the first two. Now Tomasic in his second as he goes upstairs with the fastball. One and two the count on Aubrey Major. Major at 6-5 out of nearby Indianapolis. The one-two and a little looper into left for a base hit for Aubrey Major. Good piece of hitting on a 1-2 pitch by Major to reach to lead off the fourth. Major gets set early, but he keeps his hands back. Watch him take his stride and identify the pitch, keeps his hands back, and that's down and away. That's a good pitcher's pitch. But a good hitter finds a way to get hits. Major does that, hits it the other way. Xavier has the leadoff hitter aboard. And the first base hit of the night for Xavier. Major at first with War Kenton to the plate. Major just two for five on the base pass as far as stolen bases go. Fastball for a strike to War Kenton who grounded the second in the second. Big, strong, six foot six, 250 pounder. You see the seven home runs on the year. He led the Big East last year with 14 home runs. Began his career at Johnson County Community College in Overland Park, Kansas. The 0-1 hit on the ground, foul to the left side. Began his career at San Francisco, where he was not only a player, but a pitcher. So he has taken the long way to get to Xavier. From Ontario to San Francisco to Overland Park, Kansas. And now it's Xavier wrapping up his career. Some big boys on the Xavier team, too. Workington, one of them. Major is big. Grammis is a former wrestler. Swing and a miss. Excellent pitch by Thomasick. Workington fooled on the swing. And there's the first out of the fourth. 
A well-spotted fastball that's away. He obviously had Warkington looking in, tries to protect on that pitch away. Cannot. A good put-away pitch from the Purdue right-hander. So Tomasic with his third strikeout. Fourth overall for Purdue pitching. And with one down, Chris Gibbon at the plate. Gibbon reached on a walk in the second inning. Hitting 3.03 on the year with four homers and 25 runs driven in. Led Xavier last year hitting 3.42. He shows bunt and no advance by Aubrey Major over at first. Fascia was ready to fire down there just in case. Oh, with a shift on, and if he's able to bunt that ball firmly past the pitcher to the right side, he's going to be waltzing to first base. It's one of the dangers of the shift. She got the pitcher falling off to the first base side. It's a challenge. A 1-0 runner goes. Pitch in for a strike. Throw down to second. Major is safe. Just his third stolen base of the year. And a good jump. And out raced the throw from Fascia to the bag. So Xavier with a runner in scoring position now with one out. Major got a good jump, and that long frame allows a long extended slide, and he gets his hand just in before the tag. Scott, you get used to watching runners run on the turf surfaces in some of the parks in the Big Ten. It's so noticeable on the slide on a natural surface like there is here at Alexander Field in West Lafayette. That slide just doesn't carry like it does for example at Michigan or Indiana or any of those turf places. Well you get on that turf and it's like a slip and slide and then forget about it if it rains then it just really is emphasized or magnified but on the natural turf Xavier has a runner in scoring position and one out here in the fourth. And a two ball one strike count on Chris Given. And Gibbon hits it to the left side. That is a fair ball throw from behind the bag in time. Great pick by Everts over at first on the throw from Powers. On the play, Major advancing to third, but two gone. This is a tremendous play on both ends for the Boilermakers. First by Powers to get to the backhand side. The quick release to get the ball to first. And then Everts with a great pick on that throw. Well, that is outstanding work on both ends. And a big second out. It's a base running, too, by Major. Once he saw that throw going to first, he scoots over to third. Now a wild pitch or a pass ball can tie this game as Ryan Altenberger steps in. He fouls it off, nothing and one. Purdue fans watching this will hear the name Altenberger, and they'll scratch their head a little bit. They think, that sounds familiar. It should, is. Dad Pete, all Big Ten pitcher here at Purdue. 1987 went eight and one with an earned run average under four. Foul back and it's nothing in twos. Later drafted by the Dodgers. There's Pete Altenberger. Son Ryan trying to follow in the footsteps, but he's another guy who we talked about some of the Purdue injuries. Altenberger has missed some time with injuries this year. He caught his hand on a nail on a fence earlier this year. Just sounds awful saying it. The 0-2, and that misses outside for a ball. I mean, catching your hand on a nail on a fence doesn't sound good in any context. One ball, two strikes. Pitch upstairs, two and two to Ryan Altenberger. Connor Tomasic trying to work around the leadoff base hit from Aubrey Major. He's at third with two out. Two balls, two strikes. In the air to left, coming on is Nissel. He'll make the catch. And Tomasic works around that leadoff single with no damage done in the middle of the order for Purdue coming up, led by the catcher, Zach Fasha. One run on the board, it was scored in the second inning by Purdue after Zach Fasha led off 
with a double. He gets on base into scoring position. And that allows Tyler Powers to come home, bring Fascia home with a two-out run scoring single. Congratulations at first base. Purdue with a 1-0 lead at that point, a lead they still enjoy as Fascia comes to the plate here in the bottom of the fourth inning. First pitch swinging, and Fascia skies this one foul to left onto the berm. And the mad scramble begins for the souvenir. Zach Fascia up to 280 after that base hit. And now a 15-game hitting streak. The 0-1. And a strike. Griffin Lanou came on through one pitch last inning. Got Skyler Hunter to fly out to left. Now out in front, nothing and two on Zach Fascia. Way upstairs, one and two. Billy O'Connor really likes Griffin Lanou's arm. He says he could be a strikeout pitcher later in his career in college. It was 88 to 91. He's got that power sinker and that slurvy, he calls it, breaking ball. One ball, two strikes. Inside out swing, fouled back by Fascia. As a hitter, what does a slurvy breaking ball look like? Something in between the curveball and the slider. Yeah. I mean, a slider typically is a late-breaking pitch that's very close to the fastball. Curveball has that big overhand break, and there's quite a bit of a speed differential in between there. The slurve is exactly what it suggests. It's somewhere in the middle of that. And what a lot of pitchers do will vary the speed on their breaking ball, which gives it more break. One-two pitch, and Fascia off the glove of Hausinger at third into left field. And Zach Fascia reaches for the second time tonight. When you're hot, stuff like this happens. But you get that confidence at the plate like Fascia has and hangs in there, gets a fastball away with two strikes, is short to the ball. And hits it hard to third. It's going to be a base hit. That's a tough play for Housinger at third. That ball's hit on the nose. And to play it on the short hop. Had one chance at that. Not an easy chance. It's a, it's a good scorer giving a base hit there, fourth hit of the day for Purdue, and Ben Nissel, who was called out on strikes in the second, is up, throw over to first with Fascia over there. If you ever needed evidence of why they call third base the hot corner, that last hit would be exhibit A. Which is ironic because as we walked into the ballpark today, I said, Scott, I'd sure like to see evidence of why they call third base the hot corner. And now we have it. And a bunt by Nissel, and a good one. Lanou, bare hands, throws to first, and the sacrifice advances Fascia to second. Execution by Purdue. It's been there tonight for Mark Wazikowski's squad, and a runner at second with only one out. This is good execution on both ends, both offensively and defensively. Nissel's going to give himself up and bunt this ball to force Lanou to field it. But watch what Lanou does when he does field it. He'll take his bare hand and press the ball into the ground. That's a great lesson for you young players that are watching. Press down, it'll go into your hand. You can pick up and make a solid throw to first. Lanou does, and both teams execute on the sacrifice bunt. So one down and a runner at second for Nick Everts. A lot of times on that play, you'll see a lot of pitchers rush over there and just try to pick it up, and then they end up fumbling it. But the best way to ensure against it is to push the ball into the ground. That's the way you get a good grip. Well done. That's something you learn just by practicing it, I would assume. It's one of the reasons they call it practice. What are the other reasons, Scott? <laughs> <laughs> Check out Scott's blog for those other reasons. We try and get repetitions to get better at practice. <laughs> Runner at second with one out. And Everts at the plate. Ball in the dirt. No advance out there by Fascia at second. And as you see, that sun is starting to even out now. The mound's still in sun, and the plate almost in sunlight now. So advantage just about gone for the pitcher. Gone for the pitcher, and becomes a challenge for the fielders now as you fight to try to pick up the ball at the hitting zone or where hitters are going to make contact. But then also, once it gets above the stands here at Alexander Field, 
Trying to pick that ball out of the, the twilight. Another one in the dirt and another good block by Manastra. Testing the catcher back there. And Manastra's been up to the challenge the last two pitches. Bottom of the fourth, one nothing Purdue, trying to double that lead with a base hit here from Nick Everts. Looking for his 10th RBI of the season. Ball three now to Everts. New struggling a little bit here in the fourth. A single, a sacrifice, and now 3-0 and to Everts. <laughs> Taking all the way. That's a strike three and one. And now the most important pitch of the at-bat for both Nick Everts at the plate and Griffin Lanoue on the mound. Three balls and a strike. Lanou ready. Fascia at second, bluffs to go, and that pitch sent high in the air to left. Going back is Major carrying to the track where he makes the catch. And that is out number two. No advance from Fascia at second. And Everett's just got underneath that ball, Scott. Drove it near the track, but not enough to get it out of the ballpark. Well, he got a fastball up. It's the pitch that he wanted, but they call it a game of inches. He hits just below that part of the ball. Ball stays in the ballpark. Aubrey Major back there to make the play. And now Ryan Howe, the last hope for Purdue. Tyler Powers came up with a big two-out RBI single in the second. Can Howe match that feat here? One and zero on Ryan Howe, fouled out to first base in the second inning. Hitting 229 on the year is Ryan Howe. Fascia out at second. Lanou deals two and zero. Freshman out of suburban Chicago, Prospect High School. Been very good defensively, really jumped into that second base role in late March. Made 29 straight starts at second base. Skies this one to center field, playable for Franzoni, who's on the run. It's carrying over his head, and it bounces off the track and all the way to the wall. That ball just continued to carry. Howe sliding in at third with a run scoring triple. Howe got a pitch in the middle of the plate, got full extension, and generated some backspin. That backspin allows the ball to carry. As Franzoni was playing shallow with two outs. In the spacious center field of Alexander Field. A short swing from Howe, but that pitch was right down in the zone, and he did a good job of getting extended and hitting through the ball. He created the backspin to allow the ball to carry. That ball just continued to carry. Franzoni went after it initially, Scott, like he was going to make an easy play on it, kind of loping back for it, and all of a sudden realized, uh-oh, ball's going over my head. And now Tyler Powers with an opportunity to add another run to the Purdue lead. Good night for the Boilermaker offense. Two two-out hits to drive in runs. One and one the count on Tyler Powers. Second triple of the year for Ryan Howe. Something this Purdue team has excelled in this year. The triples game. One and one the count. Chopped foul, now one and two. I mentioned it before Purdue's excelled in it. Our State Farm State of Success. It's been triples for Purdue. 16 triples this season, including the one a moment ago from Ryan Howe. That leads the Big Ten. So a year in which the offense 
hasn't been exactly where Mark Wazikowski would like it. The triple production has been outstanding. And the triple here in the fourth has played it a run. One ball, two strikes to Tyler Powers. Two and two the count. Powers delivered in the second with a two out run scoring single. Trying to come through again for the Boilermakers. Two pitch called strike three powers frozen at the plate and the side is retired but a two out triple from Ryan Howe has given Purdue a two nothing lead as promised the parade of arms continues for the Boilermakers Dalton Parker the next to get his work in to this talented Xavier team and set things up for the weekend and we will see more see Mark Wasikowski on the walkie-talkie. I remember that causing a big controversy in the World Series in 1976 between the Reds and Yankees. I think they had to get the commissioner involved and was generally frowned upon. Times have changed. Yes. Now walkie-talkies are embraced as an everyday part of life. Shevsky takes the first pitch, first strike, nothing and one. Do you own any walkie-talkies at the Pose House? I'm sure we do. Are they working? I doubt it. But the kids had them, yes. Yeah, I'm growing up. I think everybody had a walkie-talkie. Swing and a miss. Nothing in two. Stats guru softly shaking his head. He did not have a walkie-talkie. Kugler household has walkie-talkies. I could probably walk you to them right now. <laughs> they may or may not have operable batteries in them. The 0-2. High for a ball. One and two the count bring them out next week to TD Ameritrade Park. Could have a walkie-talkie for you on the field or for Danon on the field depending on who's down there at any given time. It'd be great. One-two pitch. Jake Shevsky lifts it. Foul territory now to play. Only hear it now. Hey, Scott, is it hot down there? Sure is, Kevin. If I'm on a walkie-talkie, my call sign is Dragon. Is it's it Dragon? Only, yes, you just refer to me as Dragon. All right. The dragon, how's the lat? <laughs> Pretty sore. <laughs> Over and out. <laughs> I feel like that's a new addition to the Big Ten tournament this year. There's a lot going on, but walkie-talkies would make it even better. The one-two misses inside, two and two. And so this was that foul ball moment ago. Watch this. That's what a catch. A play. Little girl ducking out of the way. Young man with the glove able to save her life and get himself a foul ball in the process. Future boiler right there. Yep. 2-2. Two, two. That's fouled off to the right and out of play. If only he had a walkie-talkie to spread the word about that great catch he made in foul territory. I wonder what his call sign is. We've been told it's Viper. That or Magic Man. The 2-2. Two -two. Just missed. Parker's fastball high and away. Three and two. Didn't miss by much, Scott. Parker trying to hit his spot on the outside corner. He splits the catcher, but the ball's off the plate. Scott Bova. Not going to give in. Here's the 3-2. Came inside, and it's popped up behind the plate. Fascia, long run, makes the catch. Good work by Fascia. Had to hurry up to get that one as it came down quickly. And Shepsky's retired. A lot of foul ground here at Alexander Field. But you see Fascia throw the mask away, cover that ground, and catch the ball just before he gets to the wall. Not always easy to find it once it's up, but he does a good job of locating the ball. Turning his back to the infield and catching it as it comes back. Not easy to do, too, because that little bit of spin is going to bring it back towards the field to play. Good work by Fascia back there as Aubrey Major steps in. And that's a strike of the knees, and it's nothing in one. 
Major one for two. Singled and stole a base in the fourth, was left stranded at third, down nothing and two on the foul tip. Purdue's pitching tonight has been strong. Only two hits allowed through five and a third. The 0-2 way upstairs with a fastball. Oh my goodness, two and two the count. Zach Fascia was ready to throw down to third. Didn't get the call. Well, that won't win any points with a home plate umpire. You gotta wait till it's called, but that's another fastball away. He set up outside, but he's not gonna get the call. And he might be set up too far outside. And on the 2-2, two -two, Major sends this one to center field where Skyler Hunter patrols and makes the catch for the second out. Both head coaches have been a little disappointed at times with the calls, but that's what you see often. Well, catchers are taught to have that outside corner in the middle of their body, but if you get too far out, if the ball's on the plate and the umpire sees you catch it awkwardly and not on the body, you're not going to get the call, and I think that's what happened in that last call that didn't happen. Matt Warkenton called over by head coach Billy O'Connor. They're going to have a little meeting. Kenton's had his meeting now with two down and nobody on. Ready to face Dalton Parker. First pitch stays up. Top of the sixth inning, a 2 nothing lead for Purdue. Tip into the glove of Fashion, even the count one and one. One ball, one strike. Top of the sixth inning is Warkenton bats with two out, nobody on. And that's a strike. Fastball paints the outside corner, now one and two. Parker getting to that outside corner and looking for that spot. But you're going to stay away from a big, strong hitter like Matt Workington. You miss inside, he gets extended, and he can generate some lift. The one-two is upstairs. Two and two the count. Two two. Good swing by Warkent to just missed that one. Fouls it back against the screen. Still two and two. Xavier done in Big East play. They finished 12 and 4. They lost a couple of games to weather. Creighton playing this weekend. Three against Villanova, at TD Ameritrade Park in Omaha. If Creighton sweeps their Big East champs. If they lose a game. Xavier, the champions, as Warkenton down on strikes and a 1 2 3 inning in the sixth. Boilers up two to nothing. Boilermakers doubled their lead in the fourth inning. Zach Fascia was right in the middle of it once again as he singles to start off the fourth. Ben Nissel gets the job done with a sacrifice after an Everts fly ball out. Ryan Howe with a run scoring triple bringing Fascia all the way home. A 2 nothing lead for Purdue, and it'll be Fascia leading it off here in the Purdue sixth inning, and a new pitcher on the hill for Xavier. It's left-hander Trevor Olson, 19th game of the year for Trevor Olson. He'll face Fascia, Nissel, Everts here in the Purdue sixth inning. Boilermakers with a 2 nothing lead. 
Trying to get on the winning track before they host an incredibly important series against Ohio State this weekend. They need wins. They need some help. The door's not closed on Omaha, but it's slim chances as Fasha drives this one to right. That ball pretty well hit, and it's gone. Zach Fasha with a solo home run, his fourth of the season. And Purdue with a 3-0 lead. Well, Zach Fasha went up there hunting fastball. He got it and didn't miss it. This pitch right down the middle. He got extended. But look at the swing. Short to the ball and through it. Generates that lift. Carries on on it. Zach Alexander Field. Well, insurance for the Boilermakers. Getting the third run. Fasha double single homer. Triple away from the cycle tonight for Zach Fasha. Boilers leading triples. Why not? Seems a foregone conclusion. His three hits ties a season high. He's got one triple this year. Trying to bite off a second triple and get a cycle to his credit. One ball, two strikes on Ben Nissel. Three nothing lead for the Boilermakers in the bottom of the sixth. Trying to take advantage of a perfect night for baseball in West Lafayette, walk out with a win. A one-two pitch and Nissel floats it into right. That's a base hit. Rude welcome for left-hander Trevor Olson. Allows the home run to fashion. Now Nissel on a one-two pitch drops a single to right. This is a good approach from Nissel with two strikes. Taking this pitch away the other way. Down and away, but if you keep your hands back at the inside part of the ball and let it get deep, you got a chance to drive this to right field. That's exactly what he does. It's a pitcher's pitch. Olson didn't do anything wrong, but that's just a good piece of hitting from Ben Nissel. Now Nick Everts the batter, one for two tonight. Four through eight in the order has been where the production's been tonight for the Boilermakers. Swing and a miss by Everts down a strike. He singled back in the second, flew out to left in the fourth. Three nothing lead for Purdue. Looking for win number 20 on the year. One of the goals, Scott, was to get the hitters into a good hitting mindset going into the Ohio State series. I think you're, at least from several of them, specifically Zach Fash at the top of the list, your, your, your mission's getting accomplished tonight. Early on, it looks that way. Although I know the first thing that Mark Wasikowski would say if you bring that up, that's a ball game left. Yeah, don't bring that up. The 0-2 pitch is high to Everts. One and two the count to the Purdue first baseman. Well, and he was not unhappy, Wasikowski, with the effort in the losses this weekend to Illinois. He said, look, I know we lost three games, but Illinois is a top 25 team. We're on the road. We had chances there. He did not go around two and two the count. Everett's looked like he was on his way to the dugout, instead comes back for another pitch. Yeah, Coach Wasikowski said they could easily have won a couple of games in that series had a ball bounced one way or another. They were able to get that run in with two outs. But they weren't able to do so, and they come away with three tough losses at a very talented Illinois field. Illinois team at Illinois field. 2-2. Two -two. Fouled away. That's it. That Illinois team with a chance to finish in the top two or three of this conference at the end of this weekend. Well, there's rumblings for those teams in the top two or three of hosting region. And that's added incentive to be playing well late in the year. Now, the NCAA always likes to have northern schools in the mix to host. Two balls, two strikes. Nick Everts, and that's fouled again. We've seen it, Indiana, Illinois, Michigan over the years. Mm -hmm. Back before Nebraska joined the Big Ten, they hosted many regionals. I don't think Darren Erstad would object to hosting another one. 
No, I think he'd be fine with that. Yeah, I think he'd be okay with it. No, I don't think he'd decline it. Two balls, two strikes. And a throw over to keep an eye on Nissel. Nissel does have good speed, but he's battled that back injury for the better portion of the last two months. There he goes, and the pitch is lined in the left for a base hit. Nissel around second on his way to third. The slide to third, and he is safe at third. So Nissel aggressive on the base pass. Goes to third on the base hit from Nick Everts. And Purdue continues with some good hitting in the middle of the lineup. You get a little bit of a lead, you can start taking some chances, and Mark Wasikowski starts Nissel, but great, a great read by him. Look at his eyes as he sees that ball. Was hit on the line to left field, the ball's in front of him, he knows his speed, slides in safely, and creates an offensive opportunity for the Boilers with runners at first and third. Still nobody out in the inning. Milo Beam will pinch run now at first base. So Nick Everett's night is done as Milo Beam comes on to pinch run. Ryan Howe comes on to bat. Three straight hits here in the sixth to start against left-hander Trevor Olson, who fires a strike in to Ryan Howe. There's Milo Beam, as promised. He's pinch running at first. Junior out of Westfield, Indiana. Seven for ten on the base paths for Beam. And Purdue thinking about blowing this one open here in the sixth inning. Nobody out, a run in, runners at the corners. Looking for a crooked number here in the sixth. How a mighty cut, and he's quickly down. How fouls it away. Talk about what Purdue's trying to do this weekend. Their opponent, Ohio State, is going to come in here with a lot of fire in their eyes. They know that they're a win or two away from locking up that trip to Omaha for themselves, but they're a big mix. With a lot of teams, if they stumble here in West Lafayette, they could lose their opportunity to go to Omaha. You know, Ohio State's no doubt motivated as they're right behind Rutgers for that last spot. And Rutgers has a challenge. They're facing a hot Indiana team right now. And it's not going to be easy for them. See Rutgers in Indiana later this weekend on BTN. That Nebraska-Michigan series. Each game of that series will be on BTN. We've got you covered this weekend. College baseball plenty. It all starts on Thursday with a double dip. Illinois and Michigan State, then Michigan and Nebraska. The 0-2. That's fouled back to stay alive by Ryan Howe. Double, even triple headers this weekend on the network. College baseball. Interesting cat and mouse going on now in this ball game. Olsen isn't liking the balls that have been thrown to him because it doesn't appear they're rubbed up. A little slick, so he's been picking up some dirt, putting it on his hand, and then gripping the ball. The 0-2. Sails high. Runner going to second. The throw bounces in, and he's out. Milo Beam gunned down on a bounce. Manastra with a quick release. And Beam is caught stealing for the first out of the sixth inning. That was a really quick release from an Ostra. Beam gets a jump. He's looking in, maybe thinking that there was going to be contact. And looked like Beam may have gotten in on the outside part of second base as the throw bounced up. And the danger in this is the pop-up slide. The pop-up slide when you're sliding in on a close play gives the umpire an illusion that you're getting tagged. That's why you should always stay down. Look at it here. Good release. It's a good throw. It's a short hop, but look at the 
foot get in, and when he pops up, he's popping up on that. It gives the umpire the illusion that he was tagged out. So we'll show you here. Watch the foot to the bag. There's the tag. It's close, but the pop up. If you stay down, you're called safe. I wish I could give you a better explanation why, but I've experienced it many times. <laughs> and you need to stay down. On factor for the moment, lefty leaves, righty comes on to face the right hander, Howe, and Howe down one ball, two strikes. Infield in as well. Now tripled in a run in the fourth. The one-two pitch, and it hit him. So how hit by the pitch. The first offering from Williams, and he plunked him. Fifth batter that Williams has hit in 16 innings. Well, control an issue. This one clearly gets away. Sinker rides in, hits him, hits how on the hip. The Boilers are back to first and third. This time with one out. And now Tyler Powers, who delivered a two-run single, or a two-out run-scoring single in the second. At the plate with runners at the corners and one out. And Powers showing bunt and looks at ball one. Again, Purdue hoping to come up with a couple more hits to string together a few runs and blow this one open. Runners still hold their positions at the corners. Billy O'Connor not afraid to call the pitch out. That's the third one that we've seen tonight. Sensing something maybe, yeah. And he knows that Mark Wazikowski likes to play small ball. Show bun, he'll put runners in motion. Just another added pressure that it puts on the defensive team. And that's a strike two and one. In an oddity, all of the production tonight for Purdue has come through batters four through eight, Powers being the number eight hitter. Albrecht at nine, McKenzie, Bonner, and Hunter are a combined 0 for 10 tonight. Two one to Powers. Shows bunt and bunts it foul. Two and two. This was a safety squeeze. Not the squeeze that you would think of where the runner starts before the ball is thrown, but what Powers is trying to do is bunt this ball firmly and Nissel, who's at third, once he sees the ball go down at a bad angle, he takes off and that's what Purdue tried to do there. Two balls, two strikes. Williams thinking strike out here. On the ground. Should be two to second for one. On to first. Nice dig at first by Warkenton to complete the double play. And the side is retired. Zach Fascia, the leadoff home run in the sixth, adds another run to the Purdue lead, up 3-0 through six. We played six here in West Lafayette. Purdue with single runs in the second, fourth, and sixth, a 3 nothing lead. Zach Fascia's been the big reason why Purdue is up. Three for three, a double, a single, a home run. He scored all three runs in the ballgame. Purdue's pitching's been good, too. Four pitchers used, six innings, two hits, no runs, and seven strikeouts. And Purdue will go back to the bullpen for pitcher number five. And on now for the Boilermakers is the right-hander, Austin Peterson. 23rd appearance of the year for Peterson. Great control from Peterson as he struck out more than one in an inning. He only has 10 walks on the year. He's going to be around the plate, and that's exactly what Coach Wazikowski is hoping for in this situation with the Boilers up three. Some defensive changes as well for Purdue. We'll outline those for you in a moment as Chris Givens settles in. 0 for 1 with a walk today. Out in front, 1 and 0. And now 1 and 1 the count on Chris Given. Altenberger and Franzoni to follow. 5, 6, 7 in the Xavier lineup here in the seventh inning. And it's 1 and 2 now. 
on Chris Given. So defensively now for Purdue, several changes as a result of the pinch running of Milo Beam. You've got Beam in left. Ben Nissel moves over to right. Cole McKenzie comes in, takes over at first base. And that accounts for your defense. Powers at third, Albrecht at short. Howe at second, McKenzie at first, Fascia behind the plate. Beam in left, Hunter in center, and Nissel is in right. And the pitch is low for ball three, three and two the count. No changes in the booth. Despite your multiple emails and pleas, it's still Kevin Kugler and Scott Pose. <laughs> yep. And our names are on the screen now to prove that we are still here. The 3 2 pitch on the ground, booted to the right side, chasing it down. Peterson tries to flip it with a glove, and he just got it late. That was almost the highlight of the night by half a step given beat it out it'll be an infield hit well the ball's hit hard peterson does a job to stop it it's a kick save and a beauty has the presence of mind to get over and he tries the glove flip a pretty good one and a close play at first given beats it out savior has a base runner what a good effort by Austin Peterson and credit Chris Given. He was hustling down the line all the way. First pitch a strike taken by Ryan Altenberger. No balls and a strike. Top of the seventh inning. And that's fouled away, nothing in two. Coaching over at first base for Xavier is a guy who is familiar to Big Ten baseball fans. Former Iowa Hawkeye Jake Yasinich is the volunteer assistant coach here at Xavier, coaching first base. Not too many days removed from his playing days with the Hawkeyes. Joined Xavier's program in December of 2018 as the 0-2 is flared foul and away. Former All Big Ten selection is now in the coaching ranks. After getting his degree and working his way back, comes from a long coaching line and family. His grandfather was a coach a long time at Grandview College in Des Moines. His father, noted high school coach in the area. You know, Jake continues the tradition. The 0 2, that one hit well to right center field. Long run for Nissel. He's not going to get there, and it'll bounce off the fence. Given around third. They're going to wave him home. The throw going to third, and it's offline. A run scoring triple for Ryan Altenberger and Xavier on the board. Now down 3 1. This team can swing the bats and can change the score in a hurry. Span of two batters. Xavier has done it. Altenberger got a pitch that was up out over the plate and hits it into the gap. He's off to the races. Given running on the pitch, and Altenberger can pick it up and put it down. Altenberger in the third relatively easily with that triple. And Xavier right back into this ball game as Luke Franzoni hitting 324 with runners in scoring position comes up. Still nobody out, and all Xavier needs is a ground ball, and they're within one. Purdue will certainly concede the run for the out as Franzoni looks for the off-speed low for ball one. Purdue has dominated this game, but Scott, you look back to that last inning in the sixth when the double play ended it. Boilermakers had plenty of opportunities, but Milo Beam was caught trying to steal. A double play ended it. And Purdue missed a chance there. Now the Boilermakers trying to Get something going here. The bullpen is what's going. Matt Moore loosening quickly out there. The left-hander for the Boilermakers. Purdue pitching coach Elliot Cribby out to offer some instruction and also buy time so they can get some extra arms loose. Nobody out. One ball, no strike count. Franzoni with a double. Back in the fifth, his last at-bat. 
He's got some big time pop in that bat. Just a freshman. Seven home runs for the youngster. And the 1 0. 2 0 the count on Franzoni. Two zero runner at third. This is a fun time to hit. Be in the box. You're sitting on a fastball and looking for something to get your arms extended. Good pitch from Peterson, but he attacked it. Two and one. Same on two and one. Look for a fastball in the middle part of the plate. Usually about thigh high. You see it there. Let it fly. Good things usually happen. Two one pitch. On the ground, that's just foul. Didn't miss by much. A two and two on Franzoni. Franzoni's in swing mode. He knows two one. If he gets a fastball, he gets that barrel out front, but cannot keep it fair. Great lesson for you young players that are watching. Altenberger took his lead in foul territory. If he gets hit with the ball there, no problem. If he's in fair territory, the ball hits him, he's out. Always take the lead in foul territory when you're at third. 2-2, two, two, and that just missed low and away. 3-2 and two now on Franzoni. Austin Peterson has faced two batters, allowed two hits and a run. Trying to get that elusive first out here in the seventh inning. Balls, two strikes. Popped him up. On the infield. How the second baseman with the catch. As good as a strikeout for Peterson. One down in the seventh. Yeah, induced contact on the infield. That pop-up on the infield is not going to be enough to score the run from third. The first part of the job is done for Peterson. Now you've got the eight and nine hitters coming up who are combined 0 for 4 with four strikeouts today. A chance to get out of the inning. Peterson can see it. It's going to take some work, though. Jack Housinger steps in. 359 the average this year with runners in scoring position. Came up in the fifth with a runner at second and struck out looking. is going to be in swing mode early. First pitch caught the corner, and it's nothing and one. Well, that's paint in the outside corner. Singer having to deal with a little sliver of sunlight in his eyes right now. The 0-1. That's low for a ball. One and one the count. Late stages of sun here in West Lafayette. Capping what has been just a perfect day. Not sure there's been a cloud float through here throughout this game. We're happy about that. The 1-1. Pitch out, throw down to third, and back is Altenberger. Two and one the count. And missed away. Three balls and a strike. Singer delivers on a base hit to right. That'll score Altenberger. And one of the biggest clutch hitters comes up clutch again for Xavier, and it's a 3-2 ball game. Hausinger does a good job of keeping his weight back and getting the barrel out front on this inside fastball. Showing a calm presence in the box with runners on. It's a short swing to the ball. Good discipline for a young player. 
Over the drawn-in infield, the base hit for Hausinger. And the Purdue lead down to one skinny run with a tying run at first and the go-ahead run at the plate in the Tali Manastra. Austin Peterson, a third of an inning, three hits, two earned runs in 21 pitches. Runner was going on the pitch as Manastra fouls it away. Billy O'Connor was looking for the competitive at-bats from his team. He's starting to get them now and then starting to roll the dice, too. Starting runners and looking to put pressure on this Purdue team. Manastra, the number nine hitter. Hitting 252 on the year. Can he deliver here in the seventh? Keep this rally going for Xavier with one out. On the ground to the right side. Nice pick up there by Howitt. Second to shortstop for one, and they cannot get the return. That extra step that Howe had to take towards the first base bag really removed any chance for the double play. Well, it's a good play, and let me tell you why. Is You're not really trying to get two here. What you're most important and concerned about is allowing the tying run get into second base. And so what Howe does is does a good job of corralling it, but then setting his feet just to make sure the feed gets to his teammate Albrecht at short. If you get two, it's a bonus. But what you most importantly do is keep that tie and run out of scoring position. Fine play by the second baseman from Purdue. And now the Boilermakers one out away from getting out of the seventh with the lead, but they've got to deal with the top hitter, Connor Grammis, who is due 0 for 2 tonight with a walk. Been on base in 19 straight games as the off-speed catches the corner for a strike. Leading hitter on the team at 323 on the year. Pivotal at bat in this game with a tying run at first in Natale Manastra. Peterson ready. Came inside. One and one to Connor Grammis. Grammis hit 341 as a freshman, 330 in his sophomore year. Hitting right around 330 again this year, and he looks at a beautiful off speed from Peterson. Caught the inside corner, one and two. Quality breaking ball that comes back and gets the inside part of the plate. That's what you're going to have to do against a good hitter like Grammis is keep him off balance. You're not going to give him the fastball right away. Now Peterson in the driver's seat at one and two. Trying to finish off this seventh inning. Going to throw over to keep an eye on Manastra. Manastra, not a guy you'd think is going to run, especially with Grammas at the plate. Just one for two on the base pads this year is the Xavier catcher. One ball, two strikes. Manastra inching out that lead. And a throw over again, back easily. Austin Peterson is allowed a couple here in the seventh, but can get out with the lead if he can throw one more strike to Connor Grammis. One ball, two strikes. Here's the pitch. Grammis fights that one off to stay alive. Competitive ball game tonight. Even though for both teams this game was seen as a means to an end in a lot of ways. Trying to work on this aspect or that aspect before a respective conference tournament or weekend series begin. Just missed with the fastball over the outside corner. Two and two. Purdue trying to go back to that outside corner. And again, I think Fash is just a little bit too far off of the plate to get that call. Yeah, hit his target, did Peterson, but the target set up outside. Throw over to Chase Manastra back again. 
this game has the feel of what a Major League Spring training game would have. You're getting a lot of pitchers, you're getting a lot of work in from a lot of players, but to get ready for something in the future. And that's essentially what we have, have happening here just before final conference series and conference tournaments. Two balls, two strikes on Grammis. And again, a throw over to first. Why so much attention paid to Manastra here by Austin Peterson? Manastra, a guy who doesn't run well. Well, it's in part to break up the rhythm of Grammis at the plate. But also, Purdue very wary of allowing that runner to get into scoring position and him trying a delayed steal or anything of the like with two outs. No movement at first as Grammis skies this one to center. Easy play out there for Skyler Hunter to make the catch. And the side is retired. Xavier jumps back into this one with a pair of runs in the seventh. Sun starting to set in West Lafayette. Purdue with a 3-2 lead. Eight hits for the Boilermakers. Five for Xavier as we move to the bottom of the seventh inning. Alongside Scott Pose, I'm Kevin Kugler. And Scott Purdue saw a couple of runs scored in the top half of the inning. Now they'll try to get back to work against Taylor Williams with 9-1-2 and two in the order against the right-handed reliever. And a bouncing ball. First pitch, great pickup by Hausinger at third. The throw across the diamond, and what a stretch by Warkenton at first. My goodness. A dandy play on each side of the diamond, and this will be a BTN standout presented by Auto Owners Insurance. Your new Xavier could play some defense as Hausinger leaps to get the ball, and then the high throw, and how about the ability of Warkenton to keep his foot on the bag as he has to stretch across the baseline with the runner bearing down on him. That's a heck of a play. Well, that is a terrific play. It's the best defensive team in college baseball, fielding percentage of 984 for Xavier, and you can see why. Great example there with Hausinger at the hot corner and across to Warkenton to make the play. And it doesn't hurt to mention that they play in a natural grass field. This isn't a turf team generating those numbers. This is a team that's used to playing on the grass and elements like this. One ball, one strike, low to McKenzie, two and one. There aren't, there aren't many better grass surfaces than here at Alexander Field in College Baseball as we get a look at confirmation that Xavier can flat out pick it. Yeah, there are no better fielding teams in college baseball by fielding percentage than this Xavier squad. You saw Illinois and the success they've had defensively right in that mix as well. Purdue trying to get these top three batters in the lineup going here over the last couple of innings, Scott. They're a combined 0 for 8 between McKenzie, Bonner, and Hunter. 3-1 and one on McKenzie. And Cole McKenzie lines that one to left center field for a base hit. Over to cut it off is Franzoni, who got there quickly and threw it back in to hold McKenzie to a single. But an important at-bat for Cole McKenzie. Top of the order needs to get it going for the weekend against Ohio State. Well, they need to get it going in the weekend. But what happens in the game when you're at the top of the order, it gets to be fun about the sixth, seventh, and eighth, and ninth inning because it's either your third or fourth time at the plate. You've seen a few pitches, you're dialed in. There's usually something going on in the game that can get you going too. And so the more pitches you see in the game, the better chances you have to make solid contact. Cole McKenzie does exactly that. As we're about to have a, another pitching change. And this Purdue team hanging on to a 3-2 lead in the bottom of the seventh. It'll be 2-3-4 and four for Xavier in the eighth. So the heart of the order coming up. But for Xavier... The heart of the order well, hasn't really been that productive today. Just one hit for those three batters in nine at-bats. So neither team's gotten much out of the top of the order tonight. It's been the lower end of the order that's produced all the offense. See if Bryce Bonner can produce a little something as Zach Fascia looms in the hole. He's a triple away from the cycle tonight. He knows it. Nervous about it, too. Pitch out. Throw down to first. And McKenzie back in. Again, Billy O'Connor not afraid to pitch out. Fourth time tonight we've seen Xavier with a pitch out. Chance to work on those tournament things. Big East tournament, just a four-team tournament. Xavier knows they're in. They can be regular season champs. If Villanova can knock off Creighton one time this weekend in Omaha, mighty cut from Bonner. 
And a swing and a miss evens it up one and one. Bonner hit by a pitch in the fifth inning. And a throw over to first to chase McKenzie back to the bag. He's got good speed over there. Nine stolen bases in 11 attempts this year. Came inside, snap throw again down to first, and McKenzie back in under the tag. Manastra keeping close watch on Cole McKenzie over at first. McKenzie inching out that lead. Two balls and a strike. And fastball for strike two. 2-2 two -two now on Bryce Bonner. Trey Schramm, the fifth Xavier pitcher of the night. He's ready for the 2-2. Two -two. Just missed. Three and two the count. Schramm looking in, wondering where that pitch was. He's going on the outside corner with that slider. It's just off the plate. Manastra holds it there. Scott Bova not giving in. Three balls, two strikes. One out, bottom of the seventh. And Bonner pops it up. Runner was moving on the 3-2 with one out. And McKenzie will go back to first. Start the runner on 3-2 to stay out of the double play, most likely. And then if you get a gapper, then you've got the chance to be on the move. Three balls, two strikes, one out. McKenzie the lead at first. Runner goes. Runner pops it up. Backpedaling is given at short. They'll make the catch for out number two. Bonner is retired. And that'll leave it up to Skyler Hunter if Purdue's going to add to the 3-2 lead. Fastball rides in from Schramm on Bonner. He's not able to get extended. Pops it up on the infield. And leads to the second out of the inning. Skyler Hunter trying to bring the thunder here. 0 for 3. A couple of ground outs and a fly ball to the left. The Boilermakers center fielder. And the first pitch swinging, a chopper to second. The flip to the shortstop given at the bag, and that retires the side. Sixth Purdue pitcher on the hill, and it's Matt Moore, 25th outing of the year. And I see a lot of large strikeout numbers for this Purdue team. They set the school strikeout record for a single season this year. Matt Moore's contributed 30 to that total. He's got excellent numbers on the year, striking out more than one in inning, a low walk total, which is ideal. Tander going to be called it. Hang on to this one-run lead that the Boilers have headed into the eighth. So Moore will face two, three, and four in the Xavier lineup. Jake Shepsky, Aubrey Major, Matt Warkenton. Only one of those three where they hit is Major, who singled and was left stranded at third in the fourth. Here's Shepsky. The Notre Dame grad transfer looks at the first pitch for a strike. Purdue would very much like to go through this Xavier lineup in order the next two innings and not have to deal with Connor Grammas again. They have held him in check tonight. The top hitter is 0 for 3 with a walk. The 0-1 to Shepsky in on the hands, and he fouled it away, nothing in two. What's well, going to be an interesting decision for Mark Wasikowski, too, is whether to use his closer. They have a great closer in Bo Hofstra. He's got a big league arm. He can run it up in the mid-90s. But, again, setting it up for the weekend, are you far enough out where he could get some rest? And you bring him into a save situation, potentially, if the lead stays here. Interesting to see. Just missed with a fastball. 
low and away. One and two on the leadoff man here in the eighth, Jake Shevsky. Matt Moore's got that crossfire action, and he tried to get a piece of that outside corner and doesn't get the call. Here's the one, two. And that's cold, strike three. Shepsky tried to duck out of the way and fool the home plate umpire, Scott Bova, but he was not going to be fooled. Well, Moore missed with that fastball on the outside corner, and what sets it up is he starts that slider in the same spot that that ball was called the ball. Shevsky gives up on it, thinks it's high, tried to duck it, and could not. Eighth strikeout by Purdue's six pitchers combined. One down for Aubrey Major. Skips over that one to get out of the way, 1-0. Big East freshman of the year last year, Aubrey Major, the sophomore from Indianapolis. The 1-0 and Major twisting that one into right center field, dropping it in for a base hit. Ben Nissel over to cut it off. Major's got his second hit in four trips to the plate. The tying run aboard with one out in the eighth. Major can really cover that outside part of the plate. We saw him do it left-handed in the fourth Back inning, and now he turns around right-handed. Look where this pitch is. That's down and away, but he gets his hands to the ball. See why he was freshman of the year in the Big East. That's a good job of hitting from both sides of the plate. He's a good-looking player. 6'5", 200 pounds, good speed. It looks a little like, and who he reminds me of is Cliff Floyd. Cliff no, Floyd sure. would do that from both sides of the plate, too. Cliff Floyd added a little bulk once it, he got well, up to he the did, but big league low. Yeah, no, I'm just saying that, that, was, that is a similar style of hitting. I don't disagree with you. Scott Pose is right, ladies and gentlemen. You can live your life by that mantra, really. Just, just tell my wife. Just, whatever Scott Pose says, just know it's right. <laughs> At War Kenton 0 for 3 tonight. And on the first pitch swinging, he skies it to center field. Skyler Hunter and Ben Nissel there. It'll be Nissel, the right fielder, who comes over to make the catch. There's two down in the eighth with Major still at first, and it'll be up to Chris Given for Xavier here in the top of the eighth inning. Purdue will try to get this win and then reset quickly with Ohio State in for the weekend, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And Boilermakers need wins, and they need other teams to lose. It's a sliver of hope, but it's still there to try to get to Omaha for next week's Big Ten tournament. Given one for two tonight. It's walked, singled, scored a run. to keep an eye on Major. Mentioned his speed. Aubrey Major stole a base back in the fourth inning. Just his third stolen base of the year. This guy, when he was in high school, ran 60-yard dash in 6.75 seconds. He's got the speed, but Scott, sometimes speed doesn't necessarily mean you're a great base stealer, at least early on. Well, it's all about getting the jump in that first step. And there's a difference between being quick and having outright speed. And they've got him picked off. The throw through, and he is safe. Slid around the tag, and Major just kept running despite the throw over to first. Major did something so fundamentally sound here is that if you know you're picked off, you get inside to try to get into the throwing lane. And you want to force the shortstop or second base, whoever's coming, to come way in, and then you die for the outside part of the base. Look how far in he is, and then he goes to the outside part of the base. That's just great base running by Major. It'll go as a stolen base, his second of the night. So he's doubled his stolen base total tonight, and now the tying run and scoring position for Chris Given. And he 
takes the strike at the belt. Nothing and one. Matt Moore trying to work around a little bit of two out trouble here. That tying run at second in the eighth. Given hitting 339 with two outs this year, 350 with runners on base. The 0 1 from Moore. And that's a strike. Moore looked back at Major dancing around back there at second base. Calmly dealt the strike. No balls, two strikes. Moore one strike away from getting out of the inning. Here's the 0-2 pitch. Fouled off the foot of Gibbon. And Moore just staying away, away, away. He's gotten some calls out there. Now Gibbon's got to expand the zone. He's diving across the plate. And potentially could be vulnerable to something inside. See if Moore can come up with the big pitch to slam the door on Xavier in the eighth. Given ready, Moore is set. The pitch. And that is foul down the third base line. Moore tried to get inside with that slider and could not. Given did a good job to put a good swing on it. Zach Fascia coming up to start the bottom of the eighth, looking for a triple to complete the cycle. Right now he's looking to catch the pitch that gets his team out of the inning. Good. Awaiting the deal from Moore. And just missed outside. Moore trying to go back to the outside corner. You can see where Fash is set up. The pitch is a good 18 inches off the plate. One ball, two strikes on Chris Gibbon. Singled and scored in the seventh. Base hit here. We'll tie this game in the eighth. Moore taking his time. Now he's ready. The one-two. And Gibbon lines into the left center field. That'll drop in for a base hit. Major around third. Here comes the throw. It's cut off. And we've got a brand new ball game. Xavier ties it up in the top of the eighth. Given sees enough pitches where he finally got a mistake that was out over the middle of the plate. He puts the barrel on it and gets a key. Clutch, two out, base hit to tie this game. It was a slider that came back and leaked over the middle of the plate. Given was ready for it. Two outs, Major's going to be off on contact. There's no doubt he's going to be scoring. He gets the windmill and scores standing up. And now Ryan Altenberger, who tripled in a run in the seventh, and they've got another runner picked off. The throw to second, and he is out. He overslid the bag, and when he came back, they got him on the shoulder before he could get to the bag. Zach Bash has had himself quite a night here in West Lafayette. A double to start things off in his day in the second inning. Came up in the fourth with a hard single off the glove of Jack Hausinger, and then nobody touched this one as it left the yard, a home run, and Zach Fashion coming up to start the bottom of the eighth inning in a tie game, a triple away from the cycle. But he's just trying to get on now and provide the lead run on base for Purdue. You're exactly right. Get on by any means possible. First pitch swinging and a mighty cut and a miss. He was looking to get on by sending it over the wall and right again. Trey Schramm still on the hill. You see, this is the part of the order that Purdue wants up. The four to seven hitters are seven for 10 tonight. Everybody else, two for 17. So Purdue's going to get something done. This has been the part of the order that's done it as Fascia sends that one down the left field line. Long run over there for Aubrey Major, and it's foul. And hopping up onto the berm. And now a free-for-all out there. Well, Schramm was watching the game before he came in because he knew that Bash has been swinging hot. Batty starts him off with a change, gets him out front, then speeds him up again with his fastball. 
Bashes behind it. He fouls it off, and Tram finds himself up in the count 0-2 against Purdue's hottest hitter. Nissel and Beam to follow here in the eighth. No balls, two strikes. Leading off is Zach Fascia, and now one and two. Well, you knew it was going to be hard, Scott, to hold this Xavier offense down. It's a potent offensive team. They've really hit their stride of late. Sure enough, late in this game, three runs on the board the last two innings. One-two pitch to Fascia. Two and two the count, just dropped low. Same thing. Don't get here. Just two balls, two strikes. Shram ready. And now three and two. Fash would love to have that triple for the cycle, but he'd be just as happy right now to get on base via the free pass. Anything to put that go-ahead run on the base pads. 3-2 pitch coming to Zach Fascia. And he popped him up. But foul and out of play. So Fascia stays alive at 3-2. Shram will have to deal again. And Fascia puts a charge into this one to right. Going back is Shepsky, and that ball is off the wall. Fascia on his way to second. He's one base shy of a cycle as he coasts in with a leadoff double in the eighth. Four for four tonight for Zach Fascia. He's seen it well and had a... Good at bat here because he saw a number of pitches from Shram. Got a mistake though. It's a fastball middle in. Fashion just crushes it. Hits it off the top of the wall. Once it bounded around, everybody's thinking, is he going to go for three? He'll settle for the double on a career high four hits tonight for Zach Fashion. Now you've got Ben Nissel up who sacrificed back in the fourth inning. Would you expect to see him try to lay one down here, Scott? Absolutely. I think that's what they're talking about. Wasikowski talking with Ben Nissel right now. I think that was more of a conversation. What are you more comfortable doing? Swinging and getting them over, or do you want to bunt? So the sign's going to be relayed what the results of that conversation was. Meeting at the mound will break up as well as Nissel steps in to face Trey Schramm. A little moment in this game in the bottom of the eighth. The tie game at three. Zach Fascia. Four for four tonight with the double to start things off in the eighth. Nissel is one for two. He singled his last time up in the sixth. He sacrificed in the fourth. What will he do here? Shram ready, the pitch, and no sign of a bunt from Nissel as he takes the pitch high and tight for ball one. Mark Wasikowski's team looking for a run to regain the lead going to the ninth. The 1-0, swing and a miss, one and one. Trying to go the other way, he got that fastball away, did... Nissel could not make contact. Clearly the outcome of that conversation was I feel more comfortable swinging than bunting in this situation. One ball, one strike. Here, Purdue, you've got to get fashion over to third somehow. Nobody out. Go ahead, run at second. And time called. Okay. 
Trey Schramm, the fifth Xavier pitcher. The 1-1 one, one to Nissel. And Nissel hits it to the left side and foul. One and two. One ball, two strikes. Tram deals, swing and a miss. He got him to chase the high heat. Nistle down on strikes and a big first out here in the eighth inning with Fascia staying at second. Another fastball away. Nistle expands the zone. Cannot make contact and is disappointed. He can't believe it. But for sure he could hit that ball to the right side. Now Milo Beam, the batter. Runner at second and one out. Well, here's a guy that can handle the bat. 268 on the year, but 455 with runners in scoring position. I handle the bat, I mean, he can bunt whenever he wants to. This isn't a bunting situation. He's going to be looking to stay in the middle of the field and drive him in. And the fastball stays up. One ball, no strikes to Milo Beam. Took over for Nick Everts in this spot as a pinch runner was caught stealing in the sixth inning. First at bat of the night for Beam. The 1 0 hit to the right side, but foul, 1 and 1. Trey Schramm gave up the leadoff double to Zach Fascia, but came back to get a giant strikeout of Ben Nissel. Purdue opting not to bunt the runner over from second to third. Nissel instead swinging away, and he swings through a high fastball. Comes up empty. Now Milo Beam, even in the count, one and one. And Fascia still stationed at second. One one shows bunt, pulls the bat back, and takes it outside for ball two. <laughs> the baseman, Jack Housinger, is even with the bag at third. Really a situation where you're trying to take advantage of a guy who's back behind the bag. Oh, when you're beam and you can run like he can, when the third baseman's even, that's still free license to bunt. The only question for me is, well, go ahead and runs it. Second base, drive him in. Create the first and third, but you're leaving it up to the next guy. Two one pitch, low ball three. And now, good hitters count for Milo Beam. Look at your pitch. Come on. Ryan Howe, who's got a run scoring triple on the night, waiting on deck. Shram behind three and one as he deals. And that's low for ball four. So Beam draws the one out walk. Fascia at second, two on, one out for Ryan Howe, who delivered in the fourth. Ryan Howe coming to the plate. Ryan Howe in the fourth inning came up big for the Boilermakers. Two outs, and he delivered a run-scoring triple, driving home Zach Fascia. Slides in at third. That gave Purdue a 2-0 lead at the time. If he can come up with a triple here, he'll drive in two runs. The runners at first and second, and only one out in the bottom of the eighth. Ryan Howe in a big spot here for the Boilermakers against Lane Flam. Howe and Powers, the next two scheduled hitters with Evan Albrecht to follow. It's 7-8-9 in the lineup. Due up for Purdue. 
Howell's got an RBI triple. Powers an RBI single tonight. Boilermakers and Musketeers tied at three in the bottom of the eighth. Purdue led this game since the second inning. Single runs in the second, fourth, and sixth, but they allowed two in the seventh and a solo run in the eighth. This game all tied at three here in the bottom of the eighth. Now Ryan Howe to the plate. Lamb would love to coax a ground ball at someone. Howe's hit into three double plays this year. He was erased in a double play in the sixth off the bat of Tyler Powers. First pitch from Flam, low and outside. Ryan Howe looking for here, Scott? He's looking nothing but fastball. Make it be down. It looks like Flam's trying to get him to go after something up in the zone, but down in the pitch, you can get extended on and dry. It's got to be your pitch when you're up in the count, 2-0. and Here's the 2-0. That's low ball three, and then he tried to throw to first, and the ball trickles away. No advance. After Manastra had that one slip out of his hand, and it kind of rolled up between first and second base. Looked like that was going to be an attempted back pick, and maybe he tried to hold up because he didn't see his teammate ready to receive the throw. He comes up ready to throw, and then, yeah, nobody was there, and he just changed his mind. Xavier and was very fortunate. fortunate. Yeah, that could have been throwing to right field that allowed runners to advance. You're going to take a strike here. 3-0, and oh, taking all the way, and he takes a strike. If you're Ryan Howe on the year hitting 234, are you taking again at three and one? No. You got a chance to drive that run in. You've just seen his fastball. He's likely to go put it in the same spot. Right there to hit. Tied at three. Three balls and a strike. Flam ready. The pitch. And that one hit on the ground to the right side. First baseman throws to second. That's the only play they'll make. Going back to third to see if Fascia would overrun. He does not. So Beam is erased on the fielder's choice. And there's two gone in the eighth, and it'll come up to Tyler Powers if Purdue's to take the lead again in the eighth inning with runners at the corners. It's a good play by Workington. He makes the play, gets the ground ball, and then a solid feed to his shortstop given. Now, first and third is an interesting time with two outs in college baseball, especially in a close game, because if somehow Powers gets down in the count, you'll see a lot of hijinks. Swing and a miss by Powers. He's down a strike. And what I mean by that is runner leaving early, stopping in the middle, the balk steal, trying to do something to force the defense to make a mistake. Not easy to do against a team defensively that's the best in college baseball in Xavier no balls and a strike one and one now as Powers was able to hold up he delivered with a two out run scoring single in the second to drive home Zach Fascia Purdue looking for Tyler Powers to save the day again Two and one. Powers hitting 214 on the season. Lafayette native. The two one. And he takes a strike at the knees, two and two. Good fastball from Lane Flam. That was a good pitch to hit. 2-1, fastball down, right down the middle. Two balls, two strikes, two on, two out. Bottom of the eighth in a tie game. And power 
Rogers pops it up. Foul territory. Long run. Manastra going to run out of room. Normal alignment for Xavier defensively. 2-2. Two -two. Ball three. Good at bat for Powers. Payoff pitch coming for Flam. And that'll get Howell running on the pitch from first. Full count. Two down. Bottom of a mid inning eight. And time called again. Balls, two strikes. Runner will go from first. There he goes, and it's inside. The bases are loaded. Powers fights for the walk. Howe to second. Fashes at third. The number nine hitter, Evan Albrecht, with an opportunity. Looks like a pinch hitter may be coming out now. Johnny Sage has a bat in his hands. And here comes the aforementioned pitch hitter, Johnny Sage. This season, 214 the average. Left handed hitter. Driven in nine runs this season. Bases loaded. Two down for Sage. First pitch high for ball one. Can he be patient enough at the plate? Flam's been in and out of the zone throughout this inning. One of the hardest things to do as a pinch hitter is to be patient because you're ready to take that swing and get the juices going. Bashes at third, Howes at second, Powers at first. There's your base runners. Bags full, bottom of the eighth. The 1 0 to Sage. Way outside, 2 and 0. And now you may be thinking about taking a pitch. Flam hasn't been close on the first two. He's clearly having trouble finding his release point right now. Nostra doing some good work behind the plate on that wide pitch from Flam. 2 and 0. Oh. Way outside again with a fastball, 3-0. and oh. Definitely taking here, Scott. And you might take two. I am squeezing that ball a little tighter. Trying to find the grip that will deliver a strike. Johnny Sage won't need the bat for this pitch. Bases loaded, 3-0 pitch. Ball four, and Purdue takes the lead. A bases loaded walk to the pinch hitter, Johnny Sage, and it's 4-3 Boilermakers. Flam missing to the arm side. He continues to miss on this 3-0 pitch. Nostra does his best job to frame it, but that's just too far out. Sage will get the RBI. Purdue's up a run. So now Cole McKenzie, the top of the order. And the first pitch a strike. You knew McKenzie was taking there until Flam showed he could throw a strike. Now 0-1, what's the approach for Cole McKenzie? Let her rip. Bases loaded. Boilermakers back on top 4-3. Howe at third, Powers at second, Sage at first, and Flam misses upstairs again with a fastball, 1-1. One one. You know, Flam's consistently missing to that arm side. He's flying open a bit. And when you can't stay closed, that arm lags behind, and the result is a pitch just like that. One ball, one strike. That's fouled away. One and two now. On Cole McKenzie. Flam stayed on line there, and when he did, that's a pretty good pitch. 90 miles an hour up. Oh. 
probably will see Bo Hofstra on the mound now for Purdue in the ninth. The closer with six saves this year and a sparkling 1.53 earned run average. One ball, two strikes. Off speed, Colt, strike three. Terrific pitch by Lane Flam, but the bases loaded walk gives Purdue the lead after eight. Now you'll see Bo Hofstra. 23rd appearance for the closer for Purdue. Two and two record, 1.53 earned run average. He's an exciting right-hander, Scott. Well, he's got a power arm. He can run it up into the mid-90s. He's got a breaker to go with it, but it's just electric. He gets a high spin rate, which carries the ball through the zone and makes it very difficult on anybody getting against him. After save number seven, he'll have to go through Altenberger, Franzoni, and Hausinger. Six, seven, eight in the Xavier lineup. And this Xavier lineup's been heating up of late. Last two innings, three runs, five hits after no runs and two hits in the first six. First pitch to Altenberger in for a strike. Tyler Powers is over at shortstop now. And a substitute at third base as that one's flared foul and out of play. Owen Jansen is the new third baseman. So we've seen plenty of changes over the last few innings for Purdue. Defense is Beam, Hunter, and Nissel from left to right in the outfield. Jansen is at third. Powers at short. Howe at second. McKenzie at first. And Fascia behind the plate. The 0-2 to Altenberger. One and two now. After, after the 91 mile an hour fastball misses wide. Four three Purdue top of the ninth inning. One two pitch. On the ground to the left side. Challenge for Powers at short who throws low. Good pick by McKenzie at first. Some guys in new spots making a good play to start off the ninth inning. One down. Well, nice job by Altenberger to make contact on this pitch. He hits it hard, and then Powers stumbles a bit but makes the play. Purdue defense comes through. One out in the ninth. And a big first out as Luke Franzoni steps in. He's one for three with a double. And the first pitch, fastball at the knees for a strike. At 93 on the gun from Bo Hofstra. Yeah, he can run it up there, and he's starting to get loose now. No balls and a strike. Foul back, nothing in two. 94 on the fastball. Use that big frame and that leverage, and he generates some torque coming down that mound, which Come results up. in that arm speed. A little different than what Xavier's seen tonight on the hill. Can't be easy to adjust up to that in the ninth inning. Two strikes on Franzoni. Able to get a piece and foul it back. Four three lead for Purdue. A bases loaded walk in the eighth, giving the Boilermakers the lead. The 0-2 pitch. Fastball up and away. Franzoni able to lay off one and two. Here's the one-two. Swing and a miss. Fastball got him. Two down in the ninth. And the last hope for Xavier is Jack Hausinger after this fastball. Fastball is Hofstra's best pitch, and he goes right back to it with two strikes. This one elevated and carry through the zone. Two down in the ninth. Jack Hausinger, the last hope. One for three with an RBI this evening. Came up with a big base hit in the seventh. First pitch strike. Fastball again from Bo Hofstra. One 
One and one the count on the lefty Housinger. Purdue with Ohio State this weekend. And the Boilermakers trying to get some wins this weekend and keep their faint hopes of a Big Ten tournament berth alive. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Overpowered in there. 1-2. and two. The ball just seems to explode once it gets around the plate. And Hofstra is one strike away from nailing this one down for the Boilers. Not much to doubt with Hofstra. Just a pure country hardball right now. One ball, two strikes. Swing and a miss. Hofstra fans Housinger. And Hofstra slams the door on Xavier as Purdue gets the 4-3 win over the Musketeers. Well, offensively, it was Zach Fascia for the Purdue Boilermakers. He gets four hits and scores all four of the Boilers' runs. 